What's up, internet wizards and warlocks and witches and wanderers of weird things? Welcome to the internet archive of an adventure in the woods. I'm definitely out here in the thick of it. Uh, the thing is, there is a rumored, fabled secret city of homies. Um, if you've ever been interested in these kinds of adventures, often they're off grid. Yeah, such is the case with this one. This might be a long, boring video without a lot of interesting things to say, but it's very pretty here. That's the hula hoop that's bumping against my water bottle. I wanted to bring some hot water on this. It's about 6 o'clock, and I don't know what to say, I guess. Um, I've been thinking about unlimited power. If I only had a robot from the future, it could be a robot from now, it's just, I don't know, there's this new Alpha, or, uh, Alpha Go Zero, and it learns how to do things without any examples provided, which is really cool. I wish I had something like that in a robot. I don't know. I'm just excited to not have to work anymore, or, or at least to have some part of me that can work more autonomously. I just know how difficult it is for humans to work. How much more fun life would be if we could just ex be happy and uh, outsource the parts of our labor that we can create machines to do for us. There's no reason why not, and there's all the reasons to do it. I would really like that. I'd really like to be able to have an ally. I think everybody should have one. Our cell phone is kind of exactly that in every single way, except it's just so limited in terms of uh, labor, and I would like it to, <laughs> I just want my cell phone to have arms. My legs. And to be able to walk around and resolve parking tickets on my behalf. And uh do research on stocks. And uh help me figure out cool trips that I think I'd have fun going on. Manage my my Twitter account. <laughs> That'd be fun. I research philosophers answer my questions about them and work on science, work on life extension, work on building homes for me or for other people or there's just an endless amount of things that could be done. I mean, that's really making my work unnecessary at some point. Hopefully, retiring humans because a new race of machines exists is fine. We've become the machines too. I think that's just this inevitability, not just championed by Kurzweil or futurologists who believe instead of living forever or a long time, instead of that, upgrading or, uh, Becoming the machine, putting ourselves inside of it. And that makes so much sense to me. This is the cell phone I have doesn't really have the sensors yet to be in tune with me. It's, uh, it's still really powerful. Um, it will get sensors, too, to read my thoughts. To some extent, like if I'm unhappy, maybe. Because they do that with EEG, so it can't be that far off apps that, like Bluetooth for your brain. <laughs> um, I love that. It would be fun to have a robot butler. I wrote this book. It's called uh, Interstellar Gibberish, and it's about this guy who's trying to get a PhD on Earth. And this is set in the future somewhat, and PhD is the way that you gain independence. It's like your badge of freedom, basically. Before that, 
uh, if you're, you're still working towards that, your slave labor and your advisors can you know, send you on some real serious shenanigans. And so he's got a robot, the protagonist, he's got one. And for whatever reason, I decided to make, a, make it pregnant. And that's weird, because the robot's more masculine than feminine. I like the idea of a robot being able to procreate, or, I mean, obviously replication, but replication is something, I guess. It, it seems to me that robots would be better off with uh, natural selection involved. I, I mean, it seems obvious, but there's so many things in biology that are incredibly powerful for robots. That's just one of them. They, they, I, I hear a lot on espousing neuroscience and the principles of that having helped us figure out what it is about our brains that we'll, uh, we can put in the, the machine learning algorithms. Ooh, that's pretty. I don't know if you can see that. Can't really. It's too dark. Wouldn't you want a machine that was your buddy? Like helped you out in any way you want. But, I mean, it's so close and synthetic skin seems doable and uh, it seems better that, I mean, we're gonna, we already are in the process of making organisms, machines out of biological matter, flesh that thinks. I, I just imagine like a blob of, of meat that has thoughts and ideas. <laughs> I guess it's not too far off from Futurama's head in a jar. This party is really far away. I had a long ways to walk. And I've only been talking for seven minutes. Is this boring? What did you like the most about this talk? I will talk more about that. I will tell you a joke. I've been trying to be funny, but I'm not good at it. It's fun to try to be funny. It's inspiring. I like the fact that while some answers stand out as superior conclusions about how one should lead your, your own life, other answers are valid, uh, if not as potent. I would say my desire for freedom and that I'm, I'm alive and that the possibility of me uh, expanding rather than contracting into death. It seems this unnatural state for me to want to die uh, at this contracting and, and it's a, a special experience, this mortality expectation dilemma that children are taught about. For some reason, children don't understand death, and I, I align with that. This feeling of freedom from death, and then society putting their beliefs on you about death being natural. Uh, Biogerontologist Aubrey de Grey has this same comment that we as a culture have collectively built up our shields against the onslaught of losing our own Cells of dying. I think it's unnatural. And then, of course, this is the question between Kurzweil and de Grey. De Grey, of course, wants, wants to remain biological to some extent or not upload to a machine. I think most people want that. I mean, it, it's, it's also partly that our machines are so cold still and they, they lack the sophistication as a human we've come to appreciate. It's just natural though, as a different computing platform to have different, maybe, I don't know the word for it, but physics properties, and, and maybe not even something simple, but really esoteric and quantum uh, states of entanglement. That, so my point being, there are just quirks about humans. Maybe we do use some quantum properties. It's incredible, the brain, a mystery even, as we say we understand it. 
there are some, there is something special about it, and it's an, it's an impressive uh, use of physical uh, quanta, I think it's called. I wouldn't mind being in a machine, I just would want to be able to try to get closer to a biological intelligence. I think it's just that we're going to become cyborgs, and I fully expect within 10 years there's going to be all these people with HUDs. HUDs are, HUDs are the way that... It's just, uh, you don't, you don't need the interface of a box, you need, you need something that sits or that watches much closer to what, and we're not far off from a watch being too big even. I mean, the, the limit on computation, yes, Moore's Law, but, oh, I think I hear some friends. They having fun. Doing the fun thing. Having fun. Oh, this was fun. Thanks for hanging out. Not a lot of interesting video in this one, but just a rambling schmuck who shaved his beard. That was a dumb idea. I really missed my beard already. Ah. I'm just glad I kept my hair because it takes so much longer to grow that back. You know, hair is special to me. It's it's dumb to believe that, but it's just since you're a human, it's dumb things like that matter. You know, intimacy or touch or feeling or heart. All these words that we put to it are there is something mammalian about us that we would love to be up and up on. So should I turn this off before I? Stumble up on them. What should I do? I guess turn this off now that I'm not saying anything. I'm sorry, this is a boring video. I really shouldn't have let this bit out here. I know everybody like, enjoys being lulled into the trance that language provides. If you haven't looked at Wittgenstein's, his, uh, I, I really think it's worth your time consider a few things. David Foster Wallace, the first piece he ever wrote about the Trisolarians, is good. And also really good is just trying to hula hoop. You ever hula hoop? Close your eyes when you do it though. And stand in one place. It's an incredible thing for your brain. It's neurobics. Neurobics. It's like brushing your teeth with the opposite hand. Can you hear them? <laughs>